Welcome everyone to the Peptide Biology Laboratory here at the Salk Institute. We are scientists here at the Sagatillian Lab and we study microproteins and lipids using mass spectrometry, which we will show you today. What are microproteins? Every cell in your body uses proteins for all of its functions, from making energy as ATP for our muscles to use, to digesting food in our intestines and livers. Proteins are made of a smaller subunits called amino acids, and the size of the protein can range from anywhere between 10 amino acids to thousands of amino acids. As its name suggests, microproteins are proteins that are below 150 amino acids. Why are microproteins important? In general, discovering new microproteins are difficult to study and analyze due to their small size, low abundance, and poor stability. However, Recent discoveries by your lab have a show that they have a very important biological function. For example, one of the new microproteins that we have discovered is called cyan, which is responsible for inhibiting DNA repair pathway, which is very important in understanding how DNA mutations occurs in different cancers. What are lipids? Why is it important? Fat molecules are important in biology because they have several major functions, including being the main component in our cell membrane, thus providing protection between our cells and the outside. Some cells secrete specific lipid molecules to the other cells, to talk to each other. Now, enough about science. Let us show you around. Here is the entrance of our lab. Due to the pandemic, you can see we are taking shifts and work as far away from each other as possible. Here on your right are two chemical hoods, which we use to manipulate toxic films and materials. Heading down to the right again is where I work. This is a pie pad. This is the tips that we use to pipette material inside of these microtubes. Here is the radioactive room. And he is Victor. This is Victor's bench. You can see He's running some DNA gels. We are also using calculators. cold room, where we store all our different reagents. Of course, safety comes first. Like we mentioned in the introduction, our lab works to identify new microproteins in the cell. 
mass spectrometer is a very useful tool for this purpose since it allows us to create a collection or a library of the proteins found in a cell or a tissue sample. The technology to collect and analyze such information is called proteomics. Essentially, it is a list of all the proteins we can find in a particular cell and their relative abundance. This information is very important. To give you an example, the library of proteins derived from a cancer cell may contain very high level of a specific protein which is bad for the cell. By comparing the protein libraries of a normal or a healthy cell with a cancer cell, we can identify such proteins that are causing a disease. This information can help with the diagnosis of a disease and finding a potential treatment. Here is a quick experiment rundown for sample preparation for mass spectrometry analysis. First, I'm going to collect the cells and break them with a lysis buffer. It contains detergents, like soap, to release the proteins inside the cells into the solution. Here, using a pipette, I am rinsing the wells of the tissue culture dish to collect the sample into individual tubes. As you can see, I have a lot of samples to collect. We allow the lysis buffer to break the cells for a few minutes. We will now use a centrifuge to spin our cells solution in the tubes at a high speed. The high centrifugal force helps the enlarged unwanted cellular particles to gather at the bottom of the tube, allowing us to collect the protein solution from the top of the tube. Next, I add the trypsin to each protein sample. Trypsin is an enzyme that digests proteins into smaller pieces. This step is very important because it makes it easier for the mass spectrometer to do its job. Before we inject our sample into the mass spectrometer, it is important to estimate the amount of protein in our sample. Here, a small amount of each sample is mixed with a chemical dye in a 96 well plate. We keep the plate at 37 degrees Celsius for a few minutes for the reaction to complete. As you can see, the color of the sample is now purple because the reaction between the dye and the proteins in your sample. We read the intensity of this color with a spectrophotometer, which helps us to mensure the amount of protein in our sample. Finally, we will inject the right amount of sample in a mass pack. As Atira mentioned before, the sample is injected into the machine and soon we will get the spectrogram, which tells us about the different proteins found in the sample. So, what is a mass spectrometer and how does it work? Like the name suggests, Mass spectrometer helps us identify the mass of the molecules in a test sample. Here is a simple schematic showing how the instrument works. First, we inject our sample and the charged protein molecules or ions are produced. The ions are sorted based on their size by the mass analyzer. The detector collects this information and the result is shown in a graph. Each peak corresponds to a unique mass-to-charge ion, which helps us determine the identity of the protein. The relative abundance of a protein can also be assessed based on the intensity of the peak. Higher concentration of a protein in the sample 
will result in higher intensity of the peak. Our lab performs experiments like the one we shared with you routinely to identify microproteins. However, the mass spectrometer also has variety of applications outside a research lab. In a clinical setting, it helps measure levels of hormones and drugs in patient blood samples or even in forensic labs. It can also be used to check for the presence of pesticides or chemicals in water or food, allowing quality assurance in food industry and environmental studies. So what's the next big question we are trying to answer? All of us here today are trying to find the unknown roles of microproteins in different biological settings, such as cancer, metabolic disease, immune system, and skin regeneration. We hope that in the future, these discoveries will lead to the development of new treatment strategies for these complex conditions. Thank you for watching this and we are excited to share our science with you.